Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. This is my long awaited review about the latest addition to the EK Archery Cobra family. This is the EK Archery Cobra Siege with a full compound front end. <laughs> I'll show you all of its features. Let me take you to the entire family of the Cobra uh, crossbows uh, first. It all started with the R9, which is still a very, very inexpensive and cool little pistol crossbow with a 90 pound limb set. And um, then, of course, we had the adder where I designed a magazine that sits on top of it and that makes it possible to quickly shoot five or six uh, arrows with it. Um, it also had a 130 pound uh, bow limb. There's also a single shot version of it. It's called the RX, so not the R9, but the RX, R10 version. It's also sold under the name Cold Steel Cheap uh, Shot in the US. Um, and um, then, of course, we now have the Siege, which really rivals or is like a, a better version of the RX, since, as you see, it doesn't have a magazine. And, uh, but that will change because we will soon also present a magazine version of the Siege, which will then be like the crown, like the king and queen of the uh, Cobra crossbows. Okay, then first, uh, let me explain a few of the differences of this model in comparison to the uh, Cobra RX or R10. First of all, of course, we have this, uh, this compound throwing arm, which definitely, definitely increases its energy. We will clock uh, the uh, shots later on and find out how much energy she really delivers. And it also makes it much more compact in direct comparison. One additional difference is that it will be delivered with a scope. So uh, you don't get just a red dot sight like on the R10, but you get a scope uh, with illumination actually, and with a mill dot sighting. Um, you also see some enhancements versus the old one. First of all, you can see that the cocking lever is longer, it's been elongated, and that is definitely helpful to overcome the uh, well, little bit harder uh, cocking uh, cycle here. Um, you could also see that they increase the thickness of the transport lever and also they, um, they made a, a full new front end, which is much more stable now here. You can see this is much more sturdy. And also the U-profile, that is the main cocking lever, has been uh, enhanced. It actually has been reinforced with a longer uh, plastic handle here. Um, also, the entire body has changed. So this looks like, you know, people would say, why can't I just not put this throwing arm on a normal uh, R10 or adder or whatever? And you can see that they had to change the entire body. So uh, this is not compatible with the old bodies. Um, and you can also see that they have integrated the string catch, the string stopper here. So that's a part that they have done. Um, and well, all in all, it is really a new model that even comes with a standard bipod that's been attached to the front here, since this model no longer has the sideways uh, Picatinny rails. Those uh, had no space here, so they left them out. Yeah, all in all, it definitely is a much more mature crossbow than the R10. One more difference is also the arrows, because you see the this is an arrow of the R10, uh, 15 inches and this is the slightly longer version for the uh, for the siege it's a 15 and a half inch arrow uh, the biggest difference however is in the veins because the old adder platform actually uses just two veins whereas the siege comes with three veins which is supposedly better for accuracy but we will find out we will start with the accuracy tests and therefore you see two targets. One is set as 30 meters and one is set as 70 meters, which is set to be the maximum distance that um, the siege actually is uh, suited for. Now, keep in mind, I'm not the greatest shooter in the world. I don't really have enough time to practice. Plus also my eye is kind of a bit shot due to a slingshot accident, uh, accident many years ago. So this means that uh, whatever I'll do, you'll be able to do better. Uh, it is actually the man and not the equipment that here is the weakest link in the chain.
Okay. I think this is a fairly good result for a 30 meter shot with the crossbow. I will now go for the long 70 meter distance. Just over there, far, far back, you can see the balloons. Can you? Let me zoom in. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, maybe I need to move the camera a little bit so you can see all three. But I have a second camera set up. Yeah, all right. That should do it. I have a second camera set up. <laughs> so that you should be able uh, to really see them popping in real time. But this will be hard because it's really at the limit of both man and machine. <laughs> so I will try how many arrows I will need to hit the head size balloons. Because that's what I consider effective for a tactical crossbow. And uh, anything under six arrows for the three balloons, I would consider a success. So guys, <laughs> it just took me three shots to kill these three zombie heads. Uh, that is an accurate uh, weapon and I think on 70 meter distance it's no joke. It is functional. So here you can see the first hit, the second hit and the third hit. And you can see that those were not pinpoint accurate but accurate enough to pop the balloons. And this is what we went for. So really accurate on the 70 meter distance and on the 30 meter distance is almost pinpoint accurate. But what kind of advantage are uh, the three vein uh, arrows over the two vein arrows of the RX? Well, we'll find out. We're going to shoot again uh, at a distance of 70 meters and we'll compare three of these and three of these and see how they hit. Now those are a little bit lighter so I will actually uh, hold under a little bit uh, to find out uh, and to compensate. But uh, let's focus on the grouping and not so much uh, how close I am to the target. Let's take a look. Okay, all of them were a little bit low, but that could easily be compensated. And you see that the grouping of these and these is completely comparable. These, for whatever reason, went a little bit more to the right, but the distance of the grouping is almost identical. So I cannot confirm that these fly better than these. I'm actually surprised how well they fly over this kind of distance. And by the way, it's quite interesting to see that all of them were powerful enough to crash through two layers of the archery mat, poke out at the rear end, even though this was shot at a, an angle, so even more distance within the target. Now, performance. The question is how fast 
can these things accelerate the bolts that you use? Well, it of course depends on the bolts, the lighter the bolts, the faster the speed. So we will begin with something highly illegal, <laughs> not illegal, but not recommended, because this is actually a very light bolt made for the R9 with a 90 pound bow. And um, so this is only nine grams. That's super light, the lightest that would fire from this. And it actually is a little bit dangerous. And it's also a test how sturdy these uh, compound throwing arms are because this is actually too light and could actually destroy it. But anyway, this is the slingshot channel, so we are taking risks <laughs> and enjoy it. Whoa! 124 meters per second, so that is 406 FPS for a small little self-cocking crossbow. <laughs> For comparison, we'll now test the RX, which has the same throwing arm like the adder, so comparable performance, and we're going to use the same lightweight 9 gram bolt. 89 meters per second, and that is 292 feet per second. Not bad, but of course a lot weaker than the Siege. And now we are testing the 13 gram blue veined adder bolt with a heavier tip. 103 meters per second, 339 feet per second. Not bad. As always, the RX for comparison. Yeah, 75 meters per second or 247 feet per second. That is a uh, error performance. Next is the 16 gram bolt of the RX, 15 inches long. 95 meters per second or 313 feet per second. Now with the RX. 69 meters per second or 225 feet per second. And now we're testing the three-veined original Siege Arrow uh, which weighs 18 grams. 91 meters per second or 299 feet per second. And now an interesting test because I'm going to fire a homemade Massive steel arrow made from a steel nail. I actually made the veins myself uh, using paper and uh, CA glue. And it's actually surprisingly stiff, even though I shot it a few times. So that's very interesting. And this one weighs 69 grams, quite heavy. 47 meters per second, or 153 FPS. Actually, I'm surprised that the veins survived it, it's just a little bit more crumpled. Paper is an amazing material. <laughs> Sorry, it doesn't catch it. I think this is too slow for the Wada Crony. Anyway, the impact is still significant, but of course much weaker. In real life, what this means is that if you have to defend, let's say, a random golf club, you can see that with the adder, you can actually cover the parking lot in front of the house, uh, the gravel part of it. But if you have the siege, then you can actually even kill the zombies from beyond the street. <laughs> I would like to talk a little bit about the extra features that makes the Cobra crossbows and specifically the Siege so interesting because of the service-friendly concept. First of all, the throwing arms are actually adjustable. This means that you don't always have to shoot it at full power because it's kind of bad for the bolts and it's also overkill for just practice. And for home defense, it actually is probably even a little much. So what you can do is you could just use an Allen key 
and then you can decrease the power. So if I go back three windings on each side, okay, one, two, three, then you have the super low draw weight, draw weight. It's much easier to cock, but it also is then able to shoot at the same energy as the RX, but just with a whole lot of easier cocking. I mean, this is like a child can do this. So we're now at a super low cocking resistance level. And still it shoots great. <laughs> but, but that isn't really the end of the advantage, since if you turn this loose like three more times on each side, you can very easily, without any specific tools, exchange the string and the cables. Uh, so the maintenance is actually easier than on a recurve one, because you don't need any kind of help string or so on. What I also love about the Siege and the, the Cobra family in particular, is actually how easy it is to disassemble it for transportation. All you do is you pop out these two little buttons here and then you can take out the entire front end like so. Very easy for transportation and the same goes for the rear stock. You just press this AR-15-ish thing here and then you can take it apart in the pieces. And service it or do whatever you want with it. And reassembly is about the same kind of thing. Very, very quick. Okay, push in the buttons and you're all set. As I said, it's going to be the most extensive siege review uh, video on the planet. <laughs> and one of the things that I really want to include is like the draw weight curve. So when you cock it, how does the draw weight develop over time? And then we can set it into comparison with the throwing arm of the adder and also of several other throwing arms that are available for it. So I made this, the cocking test device with integrated scales. <laughs> Let me show you its features. So as you see, this is an old uh, Cobra body that I put into a wooden frame. And uh, so I could still put in all the Cobra throwing arms. This is actually a scale. It's an industrial scale that goes up to 2,000 pounds, I think. Um, it's precise to one pound. And, uh, you know, it can be hooked in here. And on the other side, I have a winch that I can use to cock back the entire uh, throwing arm and then read the poundage. And as you see, I have actually eight steps so I can just keep I can just keep going one more step, one more step. Here you see the scale, and this is the end of the draw, which is at uh, exactly 19.8 centimeters. So I can cock it all the way until here, and then I can read the result, which is here 148 pounds. So the 130 pound Cobra throwing arm in this case has 148 pounds. So it's actually heavier than EK Archery says. Okay, and then of course I can always set it back to the zero point. Now as you can see I clamped in the throwing arm of the siege and uh, I have to keep this with, on with the clamp just because the pins don't fit. But anyway it's holding now. And now I can start measuring it. And now if you wind it back you see that it's actually jumping up quite quickly. So this is just a quarter draw and it already has like over 90 pounds. So and this is getting harder and harder and harder as we draw. And you can see that it, the peak is reached about here. That's 150 and then it goes down again. And at fully cocked condition it's actually much lower. It now goes down to about yeah 100, let me see even lower than this, so it goes down to about under 110 pounds, 108 pounds now. So this is what happens. What does that mean in layman's terms? <laughs> I am a layman as well, so forgive me. 
Uh, in any case, what it means is that it was quite ingenious from the engineers at EK Archery that at no time there is additional load on the trigger or on any other part of the of the body of the crossbow because the uh, the two throwing arms, the 130 recurve and the 150 uh, compound, actually have pretty much the same maximum draw weight. The difference is that um, in the beginning it is much harder to cock the siege and then it's getting much easier, whereas with the conventional throwing arm, of course, it starts easy and then it gets harder and harder and harder and the hardest part is towards the end. And that is also the charge that is on the trigger. So if on the trigger the charge of the adder is like 150 pounds and on the siege it's only about 105-110 pounds. That is why the trigger pull is so much lighter on the siege than it is on the adder. It also means that if you can cock the adder, you can also cock the siege because the maximum power that you need to invest never is higher on the siege. So it, it, it means it's harder, it's more work, but uh, the, if the, the maximum strength is sufficient to cock the adder, it's also sufficient to cock the siege. Of course, there are so many different throwing arms that you can now use on, a, on an adder or on an RX. So this is like the very light 90 pound original one from the, uh, from the R9. But I even made one using rubber. So you can use the same one, but then it's using rubber, which is of course also more narrow, so you save some space. And as you know, I love rubber powered weapons. And they can be quite powerful. Or you can even go double. So this is my strongest one. This is actually two 130 pound throwing arms combined in one throwing arm. So this is the most powerful one that I have. It's even a lot more powerful than the Siege, but it's also super hard to cock and you have to reinforce all the levers on the adder, otherwise they will bend. Plus also you have to be fairly strong to do it. And um, now let's find out if our little machine can also record this. Okay, I'm starting. And at one third where the uh, compound version already had like 90 pounds, we are at like 59 pounds. But now of course it's increasingly hard. Now we're getting very close to the end result. Whoa. And now the, t the string snapped. <laughs> I think I'm in for repairs. Okay, fortunately I had recorded all of this previously, so I have a full set of tables for you where you can see the comparison of the different throwing arms. And it's actually interesting to see that the uh, doubling of the throwing arms actually brings you a lot of inefficiency. This means that a, a, a throwing arm, if you double it up, it has much more drawing, draw weight than the single one twice. So this is what you lose in efficiency, because the energy gain is actually just only about twice of the original one, but the draw weight goes up much more, much higher than this. And I think this is because of the friction between the two uh, throwing arms. So what is the verdict on the siege? Well, as you can probably tell by now, I'm in love with it. <laughs> I helped a little bit designing it, not very much, but but um, yeah, I had my, had my say in it. Um, so um, I think, it is the absolute peak of the concept of using an easy to cock, like self cocking lever with integrated lever crossbows. Because I don't really think that you can increase the performance anymore. Otherwise it would be too hard to cock or you would have to use a long, long lever that would make the weapon very clumsy. This is now still a compact and fairly lightweight uh, crossbow. It's heavier than the RX, but you don't really feel that. I mean, it's really very, very compact still. Um, the price, well, it's definitely a lot more expensive than the other Cobras. On the other hand, you get a whole lot of more technology for it. The speed is really super. I mean, imagine it goes like 420 FPS for a 150 pound crossbow. That's amazing. I love the accuracy. This is all great. This is not like a sniper 
uh, crossbow. This is not a super high performance anti-buffalo or anti-bear crossbow. That's not what it is. It's like in between. It's like a, a carbine uh, crossbow. It's much, much more powerful than the pistol crossbows and not as powerful as the high-end ones. But the high-end ones, you know, you need winches you, or you need cocking ropes, all that stuff that I really hate. Now this is, for me, it's the perfect, perfect uh, compromise between easy to cock, easy to transport, still very powerful and sexy as hell. <laughs> so I love it. So the obvious question is, what about the magazine? <laughs> there is no magazine. I want a magazine like on the adder and that is absolutely reasonable and justified because I love magazine crossbows. I actually pretty much reinvoked the the old ancient concept. But EK Archery doesn't want to do it. They think the adder is good enough and there's no need to make a magazine for the siege. So Gogan got active and I designed one together with the German engineers and it's been a lot of iterations and now we're very 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 close. I think just one more iteration and then we'll go into production. So soon there will be a model that has a, uh, a magazine and actually it is upgradable. So if you buy a siege now you can upgrade the magazine later on. And I have a prototype that I can show you how it works. <laughs> I present to you the Siege Adder, or is it Adder Siege? I don't really know. It is the Siege with a fully functional magazine with benefits. <laughs> so as you can see here, the magazine is just like on the Adder. Even though you have these gray parts, these are still 3D printed. Uh, they will be black and uh, professionally injection molded, of course, later on. It's a little bit longer, it has to be, because the Siege has a longer power stroke. And uh, if it would be the same length, then the bolts would no longer write on the string, which they have to be for the mechanism. But you can also see that the entire rear end is completely different in two regards. One thing what you can do is, you can actually loosen this thumb screw here and then you can swing the entire scope away. This is the, the thumb screw that actually locks it. And this means you can now use your quick loader, you have complete free access and you can put in your bolts just like you would do every day. Just like so. Close it, again use the speed loader and then once you're ready you swing it back and then you can use the thumb screw to firmly lock it in place. And if you're not happy with this, you even have a second lock that locks the axis. And now it's completely rock solid and it's absolutely reproducible. So this is a fantastic feature, I think. The other part that I love is actually the possibility to cant the scope. Why would you want to do this? It's for long distance shooting. If you shoot long distance, then actually you have to can down the scope. It's not so necessary with the cheap scope that comes with it because the magnification is small. But if you have a high magnification professional scope, then your, 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 the, the, the area that you can actually still see goes down to a very, very you know, small piece. And if you don't can the scope, then you won't have enough room for the adjustment screws to actually shoot, uh, hit the target and see it at the same time. You need to cant the thing downwards. And this here is actually adjustable because what you can do is, let me see if the camera focuses, you can actually loosen this thing here. Okay, loosen it. And then what you can do is you can change the canting. See, you can make it all the way flat for a very short distance or you can cant it upwards as much as you want and then you can lock it in like so. And this allows you to sight this thing in uh, over really long distances, even if you have a really, really powerful scope. And people have asked me, why don't you make a magazine for the long arrows then? Because they're more accurate and blah, blah, blah. Well, I tried this and the first version actually had one. Two problems. First of all, it's getting really, really heavy. And then the second thing is if you cock the thing, then everything moves out to the front and then it dangles in and the heavy part is just really not fun anymore. I also didn't really find that accuracy was uh, benefiting from this much. But if you want to use this here to shoot long arrows, you can still do this by just clapping open this here. And then you cock the weapon and then you can front load 
a uh, long arrow, just the same one as always, and close this again, and then you have the same situation as if you wouldn't have a magazine attached in the first place. So this is really not a disadvantage. The magazine is more like for the tactical part of it, once you're afraid that you have to fight against several anim uh, uh, animals, enemies at a time. <laughs> I know, I know. Now everybody wants this one and no one wants to buy the one with just a single shot. Well, actually you can have both if you buy from GoGun. <laughs> Either from GoGun in the US, GoGun CO, or in the UK, GoGun UK, or elsewhere in the world, including Germany, which is GoGun DE. <laughs> because if you buy the siege from us, we actually guarantee that you will get the magazine with the entire uh, set of uh, uh, additional parts that you need to install it. You get it for the difference price of the of this weapon against the siege. So you won't have any kind of disadvantage uh, if you buy the siege now in the one-shot version and then wait for the magazine to be delivered later. If you buy the magazine separately, it will, however, be really expensive because the tooling costs is, it costs a fortune. I mean, I could buy a Lamborghini for the price of the tools that you pay for a magazine like this. So, um, so it, I'm selling it really expensive, except of course, if you buy it as a set, then we are actually taking a part of the margin that we make with the siege and, uh, and, and put it on the entire weapon. So my warning is don't buy it elsewhere. Buy it on GoGun. If you don't, then you may end up having to pay a lot more money just for the magazine. I promised you to, to do the most extensive siege test on the planet, and I hope that I did well. <laughs> anyway, I hope you liked the video and the siege and everything, because that's it for today. <laughs> Thanks, and bye-bye. <laughs>